assume that you know nothing about the piano and you need a place to start. God sent and Epsilon continues as we did see God sent almost actually losing control of their map pick, but once more, much like many of their maps <laughs> yesterday, they do bring it back right at the very end. The big step from JW shows up, and now, of course, we go on to our second map. I think it'll be the first time on this stream, at least, that we've seen Cash play too, so should be an interesting one. Yeah, looking very much forward to this. Cash is a, is a, is a great map for both of these teams, uh, especially God sent, to be honest. Um, Comparing it to the fact that this is the map choice of Epsilon, this is a great map for Godsend because they are pretty good on cash as well. So this is uh, this is going to be hard, especially for Epsilon to mentally reset after that close, close train game. So they have to okay focus. Okay, that was that was a tough loss, but we can bring it back into the next one. And I'm pretty sure that coach and the team manager Krilla has a lot to say in that break and just trying to to mentally get the guys in the correct mood. Yeah, especially after it seemed like too that um, the guys from Epsilon seemed like they had really great control uh, over what exactly they what exactly they were letting their opponents do back in that first map there. But uh, all of a sudden that just turns itself back around and it's Godsend that kind of take yeah. the driver's seat and are able to really drive the force of that match, especially over on their T side there for a large portion of it. So they need to find a way to kind of get back into that control and really force them into kind of obeying their own commands if you kind of get my wording with that one. So we'll have to wait and see how that works out on cash as we should be getting started with it soon. And I imagine actually Godsend will be starting off on the CT side since they'll have the side choice. But we'll see that in a moment when we actually do go back uh, into the game. Yeah, definitely. And, and Godson and CT side is probably going to be, be good for them. They can they can use that to warm up a little bit and just casually, just holding the angles, just casually playing. And then on the T side, they'll have time for the executes. They'll have time for the real big plays. They'll have, have time for Pronax to just get ready, get in the game and, and get everything rolling. Because as we know so far, Godson do most you likely not start out with a great play. They start out slowly and then gradually gets there. Like, this is this is going to sound like a really uh, really bad theory, but in all honesty, I feel like if, if you're going to beat Godson, your best chances to beat them are like by playing in like the first matches of the day. Because it honestly <laughs> doesn't feel like they warm up that much, and then they yeah. kind of use the games themselves. Like, go, like going into the matches cold. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's been those discussions before, too, and it almost seems like they do that. So uh, going into those matches, they don't really go into those games really so hot, and the later into the day they get the more and more polished. Yeah. They tend to look, uh, as we saw from yesterday's game, and it's, it's almost like all of that progress kind of kind of reset going into it here. So now we're going into the map itself now, just waiting on the players to swarm up, and I was right. Godson are going to be starting yeah. off on the CT side with Epsilon jumping out on the T side here on this map. So looking forward to see the pistol here. The way that the Godson played the CT pistol on train was very impressive. They used the tools that they had in the long-range USPs. What they usually do, Godsend, uh, when they play here on cash is that they stack three players towards B. And there we go, the sound is back. Three players towards B, uh, and then play that bomb side really, really well. And just hold that very defensively with a lot of focus on there. Because usually they know statistically that a lot of teams on that pistol round are going to try to hit me. So let's see if they can go for the three-man stack again. No, this is not going to be it. This is going to be something else. Okay, so two guys aggressively out in mid, one defensive. And they're going to look to boost towards the white box. Well, the guys from Epsilon here are on the opening push now. Flush up putting himself up against the counter boost position. Won't be working with Schneider to actually go for it yet, but they have the spot to punch these guys and they drop it, but no, Flush is not even paying attention to it. Schneider trying to play it sneaky too, dodging the shot. Look at him, he can't <laughs> hit him currently. Finally, they knock him out though. He sneaks in one kill in the midst of that, but still, mid is now under the control of Epsilon, and they've got a man advantage, which is just growing even more so as they bring it down to a four versus two. However, fast rotation is coming in from JW. He's got a bit of a flank working his way through the halls too. Flush is picking up one or two kills, would still be workable, but now this is going to be tough. JW trying to do what he can as he's isolated to the 1v3, but that's a great second shot on a res. All of a sudden, he's opened up the possibilities. Unfortunately, on the site itself, he's got no flashbacks or anything to force him out, but he gets a third player into the open. He's looking at the 1v4 clutch, almost loses his life, but he gets behind cover in time. Ducks away, gets the reload, but he still doesn't realize that Freddy B has changed position. He's not even behind that box anymore. He's looking for him right there. 
at the moment. It's going to be Freddy B just flanking around it. He'll be able to get the easy closeout, and JW will lose his head there. And with that, Epsilon pick up the pistol to start off the second map. Yeah, and once again on this pistol arm, we see a B B bombs are hit from the terrorist team, so technically if they would have played their standard pistol round, that would have been a way better scenario for them. Not really sure what was going on there. Of course they played, of course, the, the, the close range positions to the boost, which is acceptable because usually these T sides uh, really like to utilize that boost, um, but did not work out at all. Like you said, it even looked like he wasn't even paying attention, like looked so uncharacteristic from the content players that they that they basically, basically failed that, uh, that starting situation. But now we go into the deagle round. Yep, and in the next one, we've already seen one kill go, by the way, of Freddy B there. Epsilon knocking out Schneider. He's taking things slowly here, as we generally expect to see within that second round here. No reason to rush things. Obviously, the CTs are prone to a little bit more aggression sometimes on these, uh, on these more aggressive plays. Seeing a little bit more in the NA matches, comparatively to the games we've had here at the Minor, as they've been pretty preservative. But still, obviously, you need to knock them out one by one, and the slow path tends to be the best path here for it. Flusha, I think a nice connection on it to Kali there him down about 30 HP and now 4 as he hits him again. They just can't find the bullet that actually kills him. There you go, finally. Flasha hitting the last one if necessary. But Barbar and Rez now actually moving on to the bomb sets, clearing out the rest of these guys. Flusha holds out for one more, up to two already. He's got a line up there for a third against Rez, but he backs away from the duel. Doesn't want to take it directly, buying more time. Unfortunately, the flank that worked its way over won't actually meet its effectiveness there to take him out while he was still hiding behind the truck, but Rez ends up winning it there in the 1v1 on A side anyway. So 2 0 for Epsilon. 2 0 for Epsilon. Now we're going to see the uh, well, almost full eco here for the guys because we have three players on 1900. So they they are not going to be buying anything here. The rest of the team will flush it by to P215. That's actually, that is the investment for Gods in this round. So not a lot in this one. We could see uh, maybe a stack, um, which is going to improve their chance of just getting a couple of kills here. And it's going to be a stack towards A pretty much and a stack towards mid for these CT players. And two guys in Sandbank. See, that's interesting. Two guys stacking there will certainly catch them off guard after they the first one. Assuming they also want directly checking This is Draken oh. here now. No, no, everyone's flashed. So much confusion is going to be had here at the bottom of mid and Flusha even chiming into this one too. They actually get the first kill. Barbar, fast trade help though. It takes down Flusha. And we can see Pronax and JW still playing together from this position. Barbar immediately slowing it down. There's the clothesline kill though again. Pronax will be able to knock him out. He oh. sticks around though and Schneider jiggle peeking that there. Finds Barbar, takes him down, and now JW is going to have the confidence to push forward. Pick up one of these guns so they have the extra firepower. They've got this even into a three on three, but the flank currently being enacted by Freddy can immediately kill JW. He's got no clue that Freddy has done that roundabout there, so it takes him down. And obviously, in the meantime, of this one, Freddy's given out the signal that, yeah, B side's clear. You guys can just walk right in and find the plant. But what? <laughs> Not checking his other angle and peeing for it. Lacro gets another free kill. Takes down Freddy, and we're even again into a 2v2. Kind of going back to reality, though, as Epsilon get onto the site. But at the same time, Lecro could do some style on this one. And there you go. He walks right in and finds Rez. We go down to a 1v1, and it's up to Kali to hold this now. And Snyder coming in with the flank as well with that MAC-10. And he has Molotov as well, so they can use that utility. Kali only has one flashbang. So if Lecro just holds him off, makes sure he doesn't rotate into any weird positions, they can molly the side and then push in with that. Kali's flash is not going to be that usable unless he throws it at the exact same time as the molly goes down. So this is going to be very interesting, but Kali not a bad player either. Moving in, gets that first kill. The second player's already lit up, and Schneider waiting for it, but Kali plays it perfectly and does secure the third and final round for Epsilon there. Previously to us now getting into the gun rounds, but with that much damage being done on really both of those eco rounds, that does not look so good for Epsilon here with all the rebuys they have to go back into. Godsent will have the ticket to almost immediately breaking this T side, assuming they can take control of the first gun round now. I have to say it once again, really impressed by Cali. This is a player who is a stand-in. He was called up two days before this event, and every time I, I see him in an important situation, in a clutch situation, just in an impact frag situation, he does so well. So this is a guy who has a lot of potential coming into, let's just let's just say he's probably not going to stay in Epsilon. Uh, I think so. So potential in the next coming months to, to pick up into a great team and, and just play continually because Cali is playing well. Epsilon themselves now moving in again at the lineup for just what appears to be a very straightforward execute. No mid pressure currently. That could come in, in a few seconds here, but the main bulk of it's going to be just jumping out of A main here. This will be spotted by Godsend, however. Lecro finding Barbar early on here. Kali moving in. He's going to be taken down on the crossbar from JW. Lecro changing his position for another pickup there. It's 
textbook sight play from Godsend currently. And JW finding another one. Takes down Draken. Freddy doesn't even know what hit his teammates here. He's going to try to go for the, the push up over here leading into Squeaky, but more than likely. This round's already over here. He can surprise a little bit, but actually, no, the door just closed, so he's gonna have to make noise in the way before he can even fire a shot. If they get this last kill, yeah. <laughs> this is the most one sided buy round I have ever seen in my life. Absolutely. Did they even use any utility to go in? The and fight? they didn't lose a single point of HP. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't think they, but I don't think Epsilon tried to, like, flash no. or do anything. Maybe he's, like, one or two flashes in there, but yeah. I don't They even, just they took control. Trying to walk in. Yeah. So, a bit odd. A bit odd, uh, but God said we'll get the first round. They will have some economy rolling, and as we talked about time and time again, economy on the CT side matters so much because everything is a tad more expensive. So every player now has the opportunity to, to at least get some buys in if they lose this one. On the other side, money's not looking good. Absalon, now I'm going to try What is <laughs> Draken? <laughs> Can we get some 1Gs in chat? It's not a self Molotov, but it is a Molotov. I think we need some 1Gs. I mean, that boost took a lot of effort, man. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to waste all that time spent by going back downstairs. Oh, well. That's something. <laughs> all right. Well, not looking so good for Epsilon after that first gun round loss. Draken being knocked early, and they still have bomb, I think. Yeah, they still have that under their control. So not the end of the world yet, but with uh, Flusher doing this really damage to Barbar too, it certainly does not help their case. That's a good nade too. Yeah. Just no luck at all for the Epsilon players here. Rez down to 77. Nice lineup from Rez though. He found Lecro, so they've traded this back now and brought it into a 4 on 4. Also, a bit of a red herring being used too, with a lot of the pressure being thrown over to the A side. I actually think this is going to turn into a B hit. Godson haven't fallen for this, though. They still have too fully committed to that other site. So here we go, Barbar. What can he do? He's all the way down in middle, almost into a CT connector, but with an orb, so that's a very strange trap in the there's a CT straight on the other side. That is, well, Pronax is right here, and he locks him down, so that's going to be the end of that. Map control denied. So, Epsilon again moving their way into the B-bomb site here. Schneider will be the main force of defense as we actually saw Pronex being pushed out, but Schneider's been dinked and you know, doesn't even realize the generator player is already pushed up there. Flush though rotating back in, catches the trade on a Freddy, taking him out of the equation here. Rez down to 10 HP. There's only 10 seconds left. They toss the bomb for the cross there. Kali will be able to get up onto the site, but he needs to put this on the ground now. And actually got some holding back. They're not pushing it. They're gonna let him find that plan. Taking him down pretty quickly after that, of course, but uh, still the bonus money gets guaranteed at least. Yeah, you gotta look at the bright sides. And that in this round there was not a lot of bright sides to be honest. Um, for Epsilon, but they get the bomb down, so that's that's something. Um, 3k to, to each player right now, which will uh, make them buy a couple of Deagles, uh, maybe Tech 9s, and then save for the next one. So, Gutsen off to a strong start here now, and with Epsilon again. Not really bringing all that much, uh, not really bringing all that much firepower to the table on those last couple of rounds. It does add some worry to you. I mentioned it before, the snowball factor from Gutsen is very much alive, and with rounds like that happening, Epsilon really need to try and kick back control uh, quickly here and try to have as much impact as possible on these eco rounds, despite how excuse me, futile they may be here. They gotta look for something, but again, there's the aggression. This is where the confidence starts to roll in from God's and Flusha making these plays, getting out into the open, still letting himself some kills. A little bit greedy now as he moves in, but hey, Electro's here again. He's able to take his teammate's place, finds Barbar, the Molotov forcing them away from the vents, and they kill that mid-hit again. Another round where virtually zero damage is taken, just seven connecting on the Flusha there. Really clean from Godset. Yeah, definitely. And also the fact that, well, Godsend is this team filled with individual stars, so they need the star players to step up. And Flusher arguably is their best player uh, in that lineup, of course. He has great game sense, great aim, and just he's just a great player all all in all. And, and he's just stepping up right now, as we see uh, on, on the kills death, death assist scoreboard there. He's on nine right now, so good job by Flusher. And he's definitely warm now. He's definitely in there to win. Epsilon again, splitting themselves across the map. God's actually going to get really aggressive in this round too. I fear, however, that this is where they may kind of overextend their grasp a little bit. Yeah. JW though finds the first shot, but it is through some of the walling there. So only brings Rez down to 26 HP and a follow-up nade. 
Knocks off two more. He knows they're there though, so obviously he's not going to poke it again. He's able to draw some more attention to it from his teammate. There is Schneider, however, finding Barbar. And Rez finishes the job on the JW. He's going to push forward, but Lecro always there for these trades or to take teammates' positions once they get a little bit weak in there. So he's able to pick it up. Freddy B back on the B bomb site, picking up another one, but they're still going to have to deal with Pronax over there. Freddy B not in the clear yet, and obviously Pronax making a bit of a menace to that one, but Draken, the shot out of nowhere. Goodbye, Lecro, as he tries to retreat into the bomb site. Pronax still holds the B, the B site itself, but now in a moment here, he's going to have to rotate it, and Flush is in a one-and-done spot. It's hiding directly in this corner here, but if they don't check it, he could still shut it down both. It seems like it's going to be a combined push from Epsilon here. Kali going first. They wrap around the corner, but no. Now Flush has the bomb, and no follow-up at all from Draken. He was a position for it, and he's just going to single-handedly shut it both down. So what I'm wondering there is that Kali had two flashbangs and a Molotov. Of course you want to, of course you want to hide the fact that you're going towards the A bomb site for the long, longest time possible. But by not using a pop flash or Molotov in that corner, in that situation, he's just, yeah. If if he's in any any kind of corner there, he's just dead, and all that money is just wasted. So I would like to see him at least do some, at least just a little pop flash, just to get out. But yeah. That did not happen. So Flusher was just able and free, free and able to to take both kills there. Nothing being utilized at all, unfortunately, there again. Much like on that, one of those previous gun rounds where they tried to walk right in and just kind of just got wrecked by Godset. So. Yeah. Now on to this one again. We'll see Epsilon on their eco here, and the utility will continue to be limited. Or at least smoke, the usual smoke, is tossed out by the Godset players too to hold them away from this one. But within the bomb site itself, currently just Schneider here. Fast rotates available. Actually, no apologies. They're boosting up a little bit. Wow. You can see that. Schneider, two of them. They're trying to wait for it here, but they're both together, and that could prove dangerous. Kali finding that first one. Schneider picks one up, but Draken finds the trade. Fast rotates are available, though, in the form of Flusha, along with the other two catching on to this one pretty quickly. They delayed enough so that they're already primed now for a retake. They just don't have any pressure coming in from either the B halls or back over in the fence. Or like that. It's all very one sided in the way that they can retake this, which is one of the few things that could allow Epsilon to still close out this round. Well, let's see here, Fluship trying to make his way in there. Draken with a piece of 50, just probably not going to win that duel, but he, he has faith. One player on the bomb side who's going to go down as well, so two remaining, Barbar and Freddy. Freddy sneaks his way in there, finding the first player, but Flusha, Batman from up on top, ah. leaps in to finish the job, and JW with a long range shot is going to get that last kill. Well, how about time for the defuse, and Godsent, again, remaining consistent here. The five round streak continues. As they pick up their fifth right there now, Epsilon still yet to find anything after picking up the pistol and the following two gun rounds yet to be seen here for the secondary Swedish roster. What I really loved about that run from Epsilon, despite them not winning it, was that opening flash. That was just absolutely perfect. Blinded the guy at headshot. Technically, there was two guys there, but even if there has only been one guy in headshot, headshot guy would be completely blind. That means that he will have to draw back and can't really peek. And when they're rushing in, they need to eliminate that guy before he can get one or two kills. And that flash did the perfect job. Right now, double up setup for the CT side. And economy is looking very nice for them. Five rounds in a row, JW actually very close to clipping someone just through the wall. It's no worries at all, but he plays this A-bomb side together with Aleko, and that is a deadly combination. They'll wait for the play, as now again, Epsilon sit at the precipice of their push here into the A site now, but keeping the options open as it is still generally a default lineup. However, most of the time this ends up still leading into A, especially with the heavy focus on the mid-defense currently going on from Godsend. JW still trying to pre-fire into that angle there, but they've since fallen away from it. Flusher, though, back over outside of the vents. He's grabbed one. He's gotten good damage on his second player. Draken down at 12 HP, and Freddy B also taking some hits there, too, to 73. So Epsilon may be a little bit hesitant to actually go through with that push. They've got the door open at Squeaky, but now JW with the position. Actually, he's going to miss that one, and now he brought down a 5 HP. Snyder, though, having better luck back out in mid, finds Freddy, taking him down, finishing the job. It was started earlier by one of his teammates. However, with the time getting lower and lower, Epsilon need to go for their execute, and they're finally ready to jump into this A-bomb site, but this is very well read. Everybody from Godsend rotating over, and they've already got a flank in the works, too. Pronax is on his way back over from the big garage there. JW hiding in this smoke, oh. even pulling out a knife there, too. He <laughs> hit a little bit friendly with it, but Rez finds his way out of the smoke, almost calm again into a very nice second kill, and now it's just down to Calais, but he has not been spotted yet. He's able to sneak out there, pick up that first kill. He's got this brought down to a 1v2, even picking up the op as well. Finds that first player, but Pronax puts it into it and Godsent will find their sixth. 
One thing I really like about the way that Godson plays CT from Cash is the way that they they play the mid control and the orb rolls because they have two orbs when they do double up setup they have one on A and one on B and then Flushy plays really close mid so most teams would probably like to have an orb in mid to make sure that the terrorist can't take over mid but Flushy just pushes up so aggressively that if he gets a first kill that's fine but if he dies they can easily rotate one of the orbs to mid and that way they can just have even more map control and, and Flushy of course usually gonna win those first 1v1s might die for the second one but then they have a 1v1 trade and the information Epsilon, again, back into that default split. If they continue to poke at the A site like they have been first in a lot of these rounds, it will become very obvious to Godson where the hit is more than likely going to lead itself into a few seconds later in that round. They're still split, though. They've gone for the typical 2-1-2, two -two, keeping at the moment just Schneider kind of on the cusp of a B-rotate if needed. They've, they've made some noise over to the B-bomb sites. It's actually good that he's here instead of playing around in mid like he normally has outside of Z there. They've just left Flusha to do that. And he's in a much more passive position. He's not necessarily risking himself like he was in the last round there. But after Epsilon, however, kind of move up a little bit. Smoke still in their way with a minute on the clock. They back away from it once more, not wanting to change up their sight hit. And just going back to the group up here in the garage. So Freddy B here, the hero from Train. Trying to make something work, trying to make the shots connect. But um, right now it's just a waiting game for both of these teams. The rotation is coming in now, so it's going to be B hit. Doubling back onto that B hit here too after originally falling away from it. So they move in. They still have a player to worry about here inside of Checkers. And he's checked to Pronax. Can leap right out. They call it all clear. He's got two lined up, but he's only going to be able to get one. Freddy B, good adjustment there. Able to take him down. They clear the rest of it. I don't know. Freddy moving in there. Flusha with the faster rotate, but a little bit too quickly. Freddy B is going to be able to take him down. And now God sent again, a similar situation to when Epsilon were last on an eco here, but they don't really have any other angle to retake this from. They just have the direct path in from CT spawn over into heaven and outside of the uh, outside of the tree room there. So I don't even know if they're really going to be able to commit to this now that Epsilon are working with full gunpowder. The only reason Godset actually managed to pull off that retake was because Epsilon were sitting on basically just upgraded pistols. But now it's just not going to be plausible. And they still have two ops in the arsenal. So I believe they'll sit here waiting to try and catch these guys on exits. But obviously the attempt is not going to be made to get the full sight back. They're looking to save their weapons for the 11th round. Yeah, this is a decent choice by Godson. They know they're in a tough scenario where they have to retake this bomb side, and they don't really have much of a chance for two AWPs coming in close range. So they decide to save their money for another day, and as we said once again, the economy is so important. Uh, having those two AWPs continually on their side is going to prove great into the latter stages of this first half. On the other hand, Flusher, 14 to 5, he's just absolutely wrecking everyone. His, uh, his bar is really big. That's why he I has a away. big bar. That's what I took away from that crap. <laughs> <laughs> Some high level analysis. Thanks. Flush has a big ball. That's <laughs> uh, where I earned my spot on the desks. <laughs> so here we go, Flushy once Let's again. Call me the mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> Flushy with mid control, of course. Once again, playing it with the M4. This time around, not playing close, but one is playing close is Snyder, who goes aggressive with the AWP. Picks up Freddy B, and that is the one man advantage. Scott's in now rotating to more defensive positions because they have that one man advantage. Epsilon now again still spread across the map as they have been for many of these rounds. Oh, there you go, Schneider. He's been pre-firing at these for so long. Finally, he gets one. Barbar getting taken down there. And with that, it's already been brought into a 5-on-3. Epsilon, good stuff from the last round, but losing it all so quickly. And Kali fails to see Schneider just out of the corner of the smoke there. Flusha picking one up. Pronax dropping down to the events to make up a kill. And Flusha again chiming in to finish things off. Even shooting some shots in the bodies there. Look at the OBM. Godsent, starting to feel it now, as they go up again now, 7-4, to four, and reset the losing bonus for Epsilon. Yeah, definitely going to be pissed around now, coming in for Epsilon. Uh, I could see Draken buying a, a Deagle small armor, the other guys uh, around 2k is probably not going to buy anything, Rest probably also going to go for that Deagle. Maybe actually dropping the Deagle for Freddy B would be a good idea here, but that's not going to happen, they're going for a bit more setup quick play, uh, with two smokes and two flashbangs, so we're probably going to see some execution here. JW actually moving up there, jumping, oh, trying oh. to get himself on that little bit of a jump behind there. That would have been impressive if he was able to connect that, but falls a little bit short. This is going to be another just direct round, how, or a direct push round, however, from Epsilon, where they move in. This time, they've got smokes in one to cover them a bit, but still not looking good. There's a kill, much better than that first one we saw. Barbara taking down Lekaro, of course. Now more of that, and that's a great nade from Schneider. One, two, and only one more left, which will be dispatched by Flusha. Another 
Still a very straightforward round where Godsent is uh, making mincemeat of Epsilon when they try to push directly into these sites. They cannot really go for these types of plays. I think Godsent pretty much wins it nine times out of ten. Yeah. JW is just constantly hiding in smokes. It's <laughs> <laughs> Every time a smoke goes down, it's just like a magnetic force that just pulls JW into it and pulls out his E-75. And usually he gets a frag in that situation. Uh, so JW is just holding it down. Ten to four, if I'm not mistaken. Right now, Kali is actually... He's been dropping a bit down... From a, a good start, uh, and now just on, on, on medium frags for him right now. That is a weird smoke. Yeah, what? Wait, what was that supposed to block? I'm not sure. Did he misclick? He might have. He might have done uh, like the underhand throw instead of the normal overhand uh, throw. Well, J <laughs> that's a nice flick. JW finds the first kill and the second kill following up, and he's even turning around now. Again, two mid support system set up here to be able to stop this exact play from happening. Unfortunately, Rez grabs the frag anyway, and Barbar getting one in mid. If they had the bomb, they could send this over to the B site. Unfortunately, JW stands in the way of that, but Rez, again, actually expecting JW to move in. Now they have a chance, and the A site's wide open. So here we go, Rez and Barbar. Can they do this? The bomb is down. Barbar with the AWP. He has to come out huge. Has to be the one to, to maybe pick up the first one. But no, it's going to be... Well, just securing that there's no flank going on. Rest just holding it down, and Barba, as I said, with the AWP, looking to take that duel, but Pronax's position and the fact that Barba is on 47 and Red's on 15 HP is probably going to be key here. He's looking towards the door and main, and he's going to find them now. That's the first one going down. Barba knows exactly where he is now. Surely, the oh, okay, the backup comes in from Snyder, so there's not even a problem for them. Godsend bringing home yet another round, so it's now 9-4, to four, and the money's looking so good for Godsend. Look at that, 15k, 14k, 12k before buy, and there is basically this round and the next one remaining, so they got money for days. Slight note there too, but Pronax finds a secondary op just as the round ends, coming yes. off the hands of that last episode player. He's able to dive down and get it, so Godsend just got a double upset for free now. That'll go into the hands of Schneider as they pick that up again, and the money continues to roll in. Not necessarily a really big point anymore with there being only one more buy sequence to go through for Godsend, but still, even if Epsilon completely wiped the floor on this round, we'll still see a full rebuy, and they can kind of get a little bit cheesy with it too if they want uh, to. run boost. There we go, Epsilon. Double run boost. Oh, I don't really think it's going to amount to much unless they have a player waiting for them over there and check his but actually they do. However, they're able to overwhelm him. That's going to be Schneider pushed back. Rez pushing into the smoke. Gets the first kill. And Freddy B following up with the second one. All of a sudden, pure outright aggression. Starting with the run boost there. Gets them into the bomb site. Flusha. Smoke bang. Well, smoke bang. What did I say? Flash banged off and smoked. So he's not going to be able to see anything there. He'll have to hold back. Wait for reinforcements from his teammates. And again, Godsent find themselves in this situation here where they aren't going to be able to retake. But now it's going to be Epsilon getting greedy. Draken pushing out. He gets one for one traded out there. Lekro finding his kill. But now it's just Lekro and JW still looking for a path into the site. Oh. And they're about to be flanked out here too. Won't even really be needed. Freddy be handling things when they try to push in. And Lekro stuck in a corner. Taken down by Rez. It goes 9-5. to five. Individually, Freddy B is playing so well. Like, his team is behind, and he's the one doing... Of course, he's he's tied with frags, basically, by rest. But Freddy B's frags have very high-impact frags. Every time he gets, like, two frags uh, in a round like that, where the Tech-9 against the fully bot, oh, Godsend, those are some impressive frags. On the other side, we do see, well, Godsend spending almost all of their bank, but this is the last round of the half, so that's fine. Yep, so they do manage to claim it, but right back into the double up setup here for Godson and everybody. Full utility setups, full full lines, everything. You know, we've got like a kit and full head armor there too, but Aww. Schneider dropping down, even having a little bit of the nades still in his way there. Packs up that kill, dropping Draken. Not only this too, but you still have Pronax sitting behind the box currently. If they yeah. go through with this push through the halls, he's going to surprise them as well, which is not what Epsilon need now after losing a player this early on. So Barba here trying to look towards mid, and he actually gets a shot out to Flush, and not quite sure why Flush is just... Well, of course he's checking uh, for that main AWP, but that's not really going to work out. Barba with the second one, and this is looking really good from him. Two frags so far, not lost a single point of health. So now it's a 4v3 sort of advantage situation for the terrorists. JW is still looking for that guy over there in Z, but he's also going to be cautious of the guy on highway. That's a good hook, but JW tired. 
We're trying to play this cautiously. Goes in, however, Barbaro's got something to say about that. He responds, knocking out JW sitting behind the barrels. And in the meantime, of course, the bomb itself has flushed its way over here inside of the site. Lecker is not going to put a stop to his retake, though. Moving in and wasting no time trying to retake control the vents. He's got to watch out for the player back over here in Halls, but no! Drops into the Molotov and takes additional damage from the player in the backside there. So Freddy B is going to be able to close things down and allow Epsilon to go 9-6. to six. The Reverse scoreline of what we had back on our first map. Yeah, so what I really like in this round is that Barbar has been, oh, definitely stepped up there. He has not been really up to par, in my opinion, so far at this event. He's been the one unimpressive player on an otherwise very impressive Epsilon team. But this round, he steps up with the AWP, gets that triple kill, and basically wins him the round. Um, and yeah, that's really well played by him. If he can bring more performances like that, especially with the AWP, they actually do have a shot here in the second half, I think. Yeah, and again, JW, who was really lagging behind in that first map, has shown up here to a pretty big degree. It's again, going over to Pronex there a little bit, but it's, it's not, a, you know, an, any huge deal. Pretty much everybody on Godson is having their even contribution so far. Yeah. Lekker showing up to the table still. Uh, like I mentioned previously on that last map there, he, not really having any flashy plays, but I think he's a little bit more noticeable on this map. Still, however, near the top of the scoreboard and remaining that consistent fragging uh, factor here for the guys on Godson. It's Epsilon again. Players like... Uh, Players like Draken that are struggling currently that need to be improved. Otherwise, Godson is going to be able to crush them very easily now on their T side. So here we go, T side coming in for Godson. Um, basically, two guys facing towards B tunnels and then instantly going back after firing five to ten bullets. The rest of the team will be heading up for a split A push. The two guys pushing from short and one guy from main. Actually, the bomb is joining in mid as well. And JW, he's now hunting. He's leaving the strat behind and going for the frags. And, oh, there we go. It's actually a B split, so that's very interesting. They go and switch that whole thing up. One player is rotating all the way from A, and, well, that's Lecro, and Lecro is just not going to be able to do anything now. He was on the opposite, opposite side of the map when the pushing to B started, and, well, he, he, he can try and call it to 1v4, but it's probably not going to happen unless Epsilon do some kind of big mess up. I think he just saw Barber jumping up there for a second. Yeah. He knows he's hiding behind that, but he doesn't know if he's ducked away here. Can't see the names. He's found the head again, though. Not gonna take it down. But they're playing it together, and they've wasted enough time. There's Draken jumping back into the fray there to finally end the round. There, Lecro, a valiant attempt, of course, to clutch things, but it just does not work out. And Epsilon with a good hold on that B bomb site. Well, now they're rounding the comeback. Nine to seven will be our starting scoreline for the second half. Yeah, and Epsilon, they're, they're doing all, all the right things in order to bring themselves back into this game. Winning the pistol round is a huge thing. Freddy B just one clicks. Just like it was his day job. He doesn't <laughs> care. Technically, it is his day job, so... <laughs> yeah! I'm assuming you guys are full-time, right? I think they're either full-time or on the border of full-time. Like, yeah. maybe one or two of them still has, like, daytime jobs. I don't know. I'm actually not sure. That is perhaps a good question to ask. That is a good question, because I don't know too much about how far down the, the, the pay scale goes enough for like the European teams to where they have to draw the line at full-time I not. think Epsilon will have like enough money to do it full-time. From think of, you my think knowledge of the Danish scene. Yeah, you would the think they go to the, the minor. There's usually like one or two teams at the NA minor that uh, is still like kind of trying to balance that life out because they're like yeah. premier level teams and you don't really get that great of sponsors down at that level in NA. So there's such little attention on it, but Europe still has quite a few eyes on this level, especially some of the bigger countries like Sweden, so. Yeah, definitely. I'm um, pretty sure I've still not all the time. Just thinking about um, the way the payment works in Denmark, so, and Epsilon being pretty much a better team than any other Danish uh, semi-pro low-level teams. They're only teams that they're kind of like in contention with and, and really can't beat on a consistent basis is Dignitas and, and Astralis, we, who we all know are, well, full-time and doing quite well money-wise. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. Well, Godsent now getting ready to go for their push into the bomb set on their second round force. They're going to explode out here, but that doesn't mean it's going to be secretive. We've already got quite a few players from Epsilon here ready to hold it back. There's the first kill from Godsent, though, and the rest are going to move in, but they've got to handle Kala here. He's ripping them to shreds currently from behind this fourth, but he's going to continue to do so. Up to three kills now for himself personally. The fourth is going to be too much of an issue either. Should we actually see Schneider moving in? But JW ready to explode. He got that second kill. That would have been crazy. Thankfully for the guys on Epsilon, only gets the first one, but there's six seconds on the clock. They've got to take them all down right now. If they won't have any hope of winning this one. There's JW with the kill. They do see the trade coming in with one second left. They're actually going to take down JW after the timer expires, I do believe, which is going to cost him quite a bit of cash, and that'll be an ace on the round from Kelly. 
Yeah, great job from Kelly there, really utilizing the UMP-45 and showing why so many teams buy that in, in a round like this and then also keep it for the next coming round. So, great job from Kelly and I think you might be right in the fact that he died just one second after the time around. That's going to be a, a big, uh, big economical problem going in. And there we see 750 for JW in T-Spawn, just saw that. Look at that from Kelly, just complete control with the UMP. Yeah, no one really able to punish him that well either here. There's no utility investment or anything, and that's where that bites back as he holds a really great position. So, I mean, we can see it. Minimal investment, and Hane's already rolling in there. Goodbye, Schneider. They already know that the play's going to be coming in here, and Rez is going to get himself a nice little feast. Him and Freddy picking up those kills. Rez with two. Freddy with one, and yeah, Pronax. That play's not going to work out yeah. so well. The bar ancient bar. play. <laughs> you guys rush B, I plan A. It's going to work out, guys. It's going to work out. <laughs> Barber says no to that, and we'll see a pretty quick end of that round now. And the tie game, 9 to 9. But JW now, what are you going to buy? Because you died yeah. at the end of that second round there. No bonus money for you. You can only afford the SMG with the utility to buy it. Bit unfortunate there, especially since he's the player that you would think needs to save up the most if he wants to buy that up. Yeah. He was lacking $1,000 behind everyone else due to the fact that he died one second after the time expired. Well, that's not good, but 9-9, nine to nine, we have a tied game here, but this is the round. Once again, we had the exact same scoreline on DE Train. The 9-9 nine to nine round kind of decide the momentum for the next 2-3-4 to three to four rounds, and we have that exact same scenario, but look at this! Draken! Almost with a double. Moving in there, though, at least causing some chaos a bit. Putting the bomb onto the ground for a little bit. They know it is secured on the A site, and that's going to cause some weight on the C side to be shifted over here. Freddy B rotating away from B, and also not only this, too, but I believe that's Rez going all the way through the halls here, too, lining up a pretty monstrous flank against these guys, yeah. which we'll see come to fruition here in just a second as he moves in. It's a free kill against JW back in mid that he is able to capitalize on. That kills any mid pressure, so all of a sudden, it's just a direct aid, and they don't really have a lot of leeway back on highway, so they have to be able to trade these kills out. Two for one now in the favor of Epsilon as they move in. Flusha, a nice find that through the smoke grabs Calais. But still, he's alone with 23 HP. There's another pickup, though. The last one alive is an A main, but he's going to make a beeline for the B bomb site. Rushing away from this one, dodges Rez, but hold on. Turning around, he takes the duel, but that's wide out in the open. And Rez is going to be able to easily win that with his health pool. So that was a very big confidence play from Flusha. And, and he got so much confidence for the opening two first frags that he actually thought, okay, I'm, I can take this duel on the third one, which is... If he looks back at the demo, he'll probably say, yeah, that's not a wise choice, technically. Um, he went for it anyways. There's not really much you can fault him for. He was in a round where there was not that big a chance of winning, and he just goes for the hero play. Those two headshots were absolutely amazing. So good stuff from him, making the best of the, the bad situation that was before them there, when they were forced uh, into a pretty pretty poor attempt at an execute there. Rakin actually going for a pretty big play, too, just standing out in the open like that. JW dodges that shot. He's able to confidently re-peek and more than likely take Draken down. Dragon again, staying in the open here, looking for another yeah. one. He's got no, keep in mind, he's got no additional support here right now. So if someone had peeked through the smoke in that doorway there, he would have not been able to react to that at all. Let's see, like a monster flight. So taking the risks, but it pays off already with a first kill. He does decide to move away from it though, after they go for the re -peak back over there on boost to let them get some control here. But there's two other players sitting on the left, and there we go. There's the second pickup for him. I don't think he's noticed yet though. Flusha and Pronax sticking up towards White Box. He hasn't seen either of these guys, and that's going to be a big surprise all of a sudden in the site when they do sneak up here. See, there it is, Baba picking up one. Not sure about the second one. Comes in, the spray goes down, and Baba locks it. Great play by Draken in mid, but yeah, he, he's holding a very defensive angle in mid, so he's saying to the teammates, okay, I'm not holding short. They can walk up short, and that is why Baba was 75% ready for that one. Uh, but a great play by Epsilon there, in unison, just playing a perfect round. Gonson, of course, having good ideas now. I really like the, the way that they, okay, they went straight for the right side of mid and then walked up onto short, uh, but it didn't work out in the end. And so with that now, Epsilon, they hold control of the set here. Going reverse of exactly what we saw Godsend being able to do back on that last map, as you were saying there. So they got it tied up at 9-9, nine nine and they claimed that round too. They weren't able to control the momentum of the match for quite some time now. And it's leaving it up to Godsend here to be able to make a somewhat different player, just, you know, find more consistency with their entries here, making sure that they don't lose these very important angles. Mid's been an area that they've been kind of hit or miss on gaining that control, and they've often favored these A site hits, too. Without that mid control, it becomes a lot harder to actually successfully get into the site. So see, but Schneider sitting back here and waiting, and he almost messes that up. Thankfully, adjusts properly and takes down Barbar before he is able to swing around and headshot him. So here we go, Kali in the movie way into a good position. Actually, taking some damage here that he sh probably shouldn't be. 
behind this truck here, and this is surely going to be an A hit. It's going to be a fake towards B by Snyder, and then the guys are going to execute onto the A side, probably on that flashbang, but yeah, Lecro goes in for the first one for that trade. Now it's 3v4, four players on the Terry side, but they're not moving in yet. Still holding it back. They've got enough time, so it's not a big worry yet, but just taking it slowly, and there's good reason to that. Getting a false sense of security, which JW is going to try to capitalize on. A bit to the left there, JW. You can find yourself a shot. But Draken, again, finding the op shots there. He's a little bit too far wide, however. So after that second one, Lecker is going to be able to trade. He's already had his impact, though. Unfortunately, the numbers still do not add up. It's down to Rez in the 1v2. But Lecro still does not feel confident enough to go into this site and find that plant. They've only got 20 seconds left. Thankfully, the bomb plant may not be necessary with this flight coming in from Schneider. However, he's looking for it. Schneider still ends up winning the final 1v1, though. And Godsent pick it back up. We go 10 to 11. Good job there by Godsent to take that one back. If you look at the money for the Epsilon side, they do have enough to buy. On the Godsent side, of course, they are starting to generate a bit of a bank. Schneider, especially in that one, getting some money saved up and Drake and this this is just great plays from him 3k but not enough to win the round uh, the rest of his team not really up to par in that one but Draken has been going back and forth in in my opinion with his uh, with his play so far in this game and right now he's playing really well so that is a big 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 upside for, uh, for Epsilon immediately Pronax already starting to peek his way into the site very early on the first just Two or three seconds of the round there, as soon as they can get into a position to do it. He pokes his way out there, looking to see if he can find anything on the A site. Will not work successfully, but it's certainly drawn attention to it. And I mean, with them going into this site, everybody's going to start to rotate very early from Epsilon here. Got quite a few guys prepared to open up a flank there, too, specifically. Rez move his way in, but Kale up on the top there. He'll pick up the first kill against Lecro. JW catching the trade, though. Takes down Calais, but again, much like that last round, they're, they're a bit slow to move into the slight. And much like the last round, again, there is good reason for this. As JW gets another kill on over there, taking a player down. Barra, he's going to be burnt out over here from Quad. Thankfully, he responded well with the flashback, so he is able to keep himself alive for a bit longer. Ultimately, though, goes down before he can make an impact there. And this is left to a 4v2 retake against the favor of Epsilon. Yeah, this is going to be incredibly hard for Res and Freddy B to retake. They do have one Molotov and one kit, so it's not... A complete mismatch. Um, but Freddy Beast is going to save so <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. But something I really like about Godson is that usually these slow A takes, I'm not very impressed by them, but Godson just makes it work. And that's mainly due to JW just always getting that opening peak in the door. I think now he has to, to rotate around and play a different position after playing that door position two times, but these two rounds, he's made the the difference for his team, peaking with the AWP there. That round specifically gets two in a row as well, yeah. as Epsilon continue to kind of feed players to him over there on the upper uh, on the upper rafters, so it's not a lot of those guys can do to counter him out from there, and he's always ready to take those shots, and he's watching for that position specifically. They kind of play right into his hands, and that's where Godsent gain most of their momentum to take control of that site. So right now, 11 to 11, tied scoreline between these two teams, and while Epsilon are looking they're looking okay. Uh, they still need that last 10-20% in order to, to, in my opinion, best Godsend especially. Uh, with a buyer like this coming in, it's going to be very hard, which means that Godsend is probably going to get that lead. Uh, and a lead at this time in the game, and with them playing as well as they are right now, that could be detrimental to the result of this game. And they will again spread across the map, but it's Epsilon this time on their eco round. They're going to get a lot more aggressive, and they almost catch Lethro. Adjusted at the last moment, but still gets traded up by Kale. Now Pronax being forced to run back here, and he's got to make sure he can still get the bomb too. However, I think Epsilon have had enough of that. They pushed in, they managed to pick up that kill, and they're just going to fall back to the site afterwards. The interesting thing is they haven't rotated. They're still expecting Godson to follow through with the A hit. Instead of just going over to B, which is what they're doing now, it's still Barbar alone here. Yeah, this is this needs a hero play from Barbar if he has it, to have any chance here. Just got a P2K as well. No yeah. guns at all to work with here. This would be uh, something for the history books if he could hold this off on his own. This is probably one of the hardest things. Like you're in an eco, you only have that P2K, and you just know, okay, they're coming in five, ten seconds. What can I actually do to do uh, to to hold this one? And he's just playing as defensively as he can, just holding back the angles, not doing anything stupid so far. But the terrorists are waiting a bit as well. So now they are going to move in very slowly, of course, and trying to draw the attention away from the, just towards the ace a little bit. There's going to be JW also kind of driving the wedge too as he takes the battle out there. It's one kill, but then it's traded down. It's Barbar holding. He's found one, but then it goes down to Flusha afterwards here. Flusha, again, now looking to hold there, making sure that nobody else is rotating quickly enough. The interesting though is they have a lot of res to get control of the rifle, but 
it's going to be tough for him to utilize it properly with only 17 HP. It's not like he can really toss it over to Draken either, obviously, with him being pretty far away. Draken moving in through the T. Always, though, he's looking for that first opening kill. Nobody has spotted him here. The nade goes in too. Not some great damage, but now Draken's position has been given away. They managed to stop Rez before he can have any impact, and now they know the Draken is hiding here in the mini pit, so they're just going to wait him out. They're at no risk of being taken down by him, so he's going to actively have to move up, and they have a cross spray angle set up for this one. Finally moving in to look for the kill. He's out of ammo, and Flusha knows oh! it, so he goes in for the knife. And there you have it. Got sent, closing out the round. They've tied it up again. Actually, apologies, they've taken the lead now to go 12 to 11. Yeah, now the bag is starting to look really scary for Godsend as well. They have a couple of players on, on 4K after buy, 8K after buy, so they're going to be able to buy up, and this is the knife from Flusha just... Straight BM, getting it in. Draken just goes down. So they take control of that one there, and that's uh, this is becoming a very similar story now for Godsend after they finally get their spree rolling here for Epsilon themselves, of course. Another buy run for them, and Draken just going right out of the halls. Find Schneider early on. Not going to mean much yet, and actually this may spur Godsend on to go for a faster execute in the A, but it doesn't seem so. They're still holding and they're still taking it. Pretty similar pace to the, that we've seen in previous rounds. However, they've been detected. They know yeah. there's no one in those B halls, so rotations have already come in from Epsilon. However, they're a bit fidgety, and they'll go back towards mid when they don't see anything rolling into A either. JW again, waiting it out, still playing in Squeaky Door, and still finding those kills. This time it's Freddy B that he takes down, back over by Toxic, and I think he just spotted the player on top of Big Red, too. Won't be able to get that kill, though, as Barber just jumped down after being spotted. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny to me that Epsilon are just not expecting him to be there every round by now. Um, he's gotten so many... So many big kills from that position, and Epsilon just constantly just feeding him kills. Uh, but right now, they are still waiting in A main, as we talked about. Just waiting, not pushing in yet. This very, very incredibly slow A push is, seems to be the standard and the style for Godsend in these rounds. Trying to molly the hell out of the site currently to get Barbara out of the quad spot. It worked, but they don't get that kill when he crosses. And now the response is rolling in from Epsilon here. They're all pretty much ready to defend it, except for Rez, who has kept his insurance policy on the other side, and they <laughs> just destroy them. Godsend take way too long to actually start that hit, and Epsilon are eventually able to just shut it down themselves before it even begins. So here we go 12 to 12, and a pulse is coming in. So. It's going to be interesting. Started with 10k, and um, I think that's flusher with 5.7. That means that they could have some kind of buy here, Godsend. Um, almost like an entire full buy with AKs. One player is going to be missing a player that tech 9. So this could be an interesting one. What are they going to do? We do, of course, a pause coming in. Tactical pause from Godsend. Thank you for that graphic. That is amazing. And uh, they're definitely just talking about, okay, what are we going to do now in this round? What is the strat? Are we going to try something completely new? Because I think by now they cannot do this slow A take anymore. Yeah, I mean, we've still seen some of the positions working, though, which is the curious thing. Like yeah. I was mentioned, but JW there still grabbing himself a couple of kills. It, that time, honestly, I think it was just a matter of pacing. I don't think the strat itself is flawed. I think they just took that way too way too slowly. Yeah, definitely. And Epsilon were like, oh, they, eventually they realized they're, they were doing this again. But when they, when they originally went to line up for it at the beginning of the round, they had no clue. They were still keeping their players over there. And although they originally rotated a lot of guys in, they, went, they took them back it's over towards mid. So they expected that to wrap back over towards B yeah. after they'd gotten the first kill. But it didn't happen. They stuck to it. But then they too long and while well, there's yeah well they clearly can't be going to be with this much time left on the clock they're heading into A again. Yeah I agree definitely with that they need to do this like the same take but way quicker that would be a perfect uh, solution to that. JW not with an op this time so he can't pull out those wonder frags from the door and as I mentioned earlier it's going to be Pronax uh, one of the players on that tech 9 instead of AKs but here we go opening frag in mid and Barba also on 57 HP JW traded down to 15 also. It's also Lecro in the position by the door this time too they sent JW away yeah. from there, as we saw him grabbing the kill in mid, of course, but uh, Lecker even finding effectiveness there, too, as he hits Barbar through that door, bringing him down to 57 HP. So with that one, it is going to put the guys from Gotham into a good position to move in, but now Epsilon will start to expect this here, too, because there's yeah. no pressure in the B-Halls. They haven't moved in to check that yet, but Draken's waiting for it here. He knows it's an eventuality that he'll have to deal with. So just prepare for the worst here, as they hold a 2-2 split. 
Still surprised in all honesty they have that heavy commitment towards B. And again, the Molotov is going to force a player out of position. Draken actually, I think, gets the connection onto Pronax there, but it doesn't hit fully. It only brings down 24 HP. Flusher being hit on the way in here, too. And Draken forced into the corner. They think he's cleared out, and that's the problem, because now Draken's picking up some kills. That'll be traded out rather fast by JW, but now more on the way here. JW still fragging out through two more kills when he's already down below 15 HP. And with Schneider's kill against Rez, that's going to send Freddy packing over to the B site to save. He shifts out towards Z with one more kill, but now at 12 HP, there is not much he can do. I really love the way that JW has been stepping his way back into this game because on the first half of D train he did not look good at all. But now he on Cassie is, is just a completely new JW we've seen in, in comparison to the first map. And he's not just getting frags with the AWP. In this round, 3k with the AK as well. So JW just looking, looking like his normal self again. He's woken up now. It's coming back into the fray, of course. And Again, for Epsilon here, the inconsistency after holding control of things at the beginning of the half is really started to bite back. God sent by looking unstoppable now with JW at the helm of things, it seems. Him and Flusha. And we can see uh, Lecro 2 may even finding some effect on this, even though he kind of, uh, he kind of, it's been a little bit more quiet in the second half specifically. Mm. The first half was a good one for him, but haven't seen much of him beyond it. Just a few kills here and there in the second. And mainly JW finding that effectiveness and yeah, JW for <laughs> Draken. Apologies. Finds that really great flick at the beginning to hold it, but the rest of his team just does not shine through that well due to the pacing that Godsend takes yeah. and rushing into that site that time. So we do have the full buy coming in from Godsend. Now Epsilon on the other hand will be in a course by one guy on a C set seventy five, one guy on UMP and one guy on a for Mars and still utility lacking for most of the players. So this is gonna be a very hard round for them to hold and potentially gonna give Godsend the forty to twelve lead, which is a very important lead in the last stages of this game. If you get that two round lead in the end, it's so pretty good for you going into the last couple of rounds. Still getting ready though at the edge of the B halls here, so shots back in Schneider. <laughs> Trying to spray into that. Just spraying it nothing though, as we can see. But the flashbangs go in, it'll hit on Schneider, but not the A team here as they push their way into the site. The guys from Epsilon are ready for it. Oh! Look at that spray transfer from Lecker. I said he's quiet. Well now he's woken up. Unfortunately, rushes in thinking he's safe. That's a problem. As now three trades have come in from Epsilon and Barbar wrapping around the backside. Takes down JW. It's just on Flusher now. He's got a generator position, but he's lost bomb control. He's got to somehow try to find a way to make this work. Who else but Flusher in this situation? He has a, a decent chance here, a bunch of utility. He knows where Freddy B is, but he doesn't want to give up his position just yet. So no molly is used, but he has that molly in his arsenal. Has to smoke as well towards CT. So we're going to probably see the molly, yeah, be molly being used now. Oh, he has so many smokes. That one down onto the floor. So he's actually got a clear path to get the bomb back. But look at this. Oh, oh no. Surprise play. Kelly's waiting for him right on the other side, though. He's got to try to flash through this one. He's still actually just waiting for it to fade. Moves in, and oh no! That's the wrong idea as far as where these guys are positioned. So it tries to adjust, but it does not work out. And Kelly, who was sitting there waiting, is going to close out the round. And again, we're tied now. 13 yes. to all. It seems to be the the name of the game when you're watching Godson play in like the last 10 rounds of the game. They're just going to be tying each other up all the, constant, all the time, constantly. And look at that spray transfer from Lecro. That was beautiful. Good stuff from him, unfortunately, just gets a little bit too aggressive, and then it's kind of a domino effect after he goes down. Yeah. The rest of Gonson get knocked out, and the flank from Barbar over there in mid pretty much seals the deal for Epsilon to close out on that one. Just a bit of an elongated 1v3 from Flusher, since he did still hold control of the site, and the Epsilon guys didn't really want to risk anything there in the clutch situation for obvious reasons. So now a full deagle round coming in from Godsend, um, looking quite... Quite strong usually with the Deagles, but surely this could not be a round win for them. Deagle and Nade combination coming in from Snyder, and they are once again setting up for this, well, a main focus taken, which we by far not by now know that this is going to result in an A push, but can the CTs figure that out as well? And we can see God sent once again prepped for an A hit but being very, very passive about the way they approach it. This time, though, it's with good reason, obviously, since they're back down onto these deagles here. And it's the first time in a while we have seen them be restricted to this uh, this large of a degree. Barbar already catching the first player. That's Flusha. Like, was hunting for something. as He's kind of taking up the mantle that JW had previously over here in Squeaky. And he's still hunting for control back at mid. And he's getting it for free. There's no one defending mid at the moment. He's allowed to walk all the way up the highway there. Barbar catching the second player out from Amy. Now Pronax now going down. The 5v3. This positioning 
up on Highway itself is not going to matter much since they still have Barber in the way, as we've seen there. He's taking down one, and then Kali and Drakkar are just going to move in to close out onto the final two. Epsilon takes the lead, and it'll take us into another gun round for Godsent, possibly with the fate of deciding map number two. Yeah, definitely. This is going to be balls to the wall, pretty much, for, for Godsend. This is going to be incredibly hard for them. Uh, they don't even have all the utility that they need. They do have an AWP on JW, and that is the most important thing here. But as we can see, they're lacking flashbangs on most players, lacking smokes even on some players. I think only one player has almost a correct lineup, and that's Lecro. All the other players are missing utility, and on the other side, Epsilon have everything they need at their disposal. God said again. The default split here, but I like what we're seeing from JW. We haven't actually seen a whole lot of play on boost so far in this half from mid. Mm. At the same time, though, Epsilon have not really been putting an active uh, active player out into the open on mid where someone in boost could punish it. So it's a bit different. You can see around the corner there, there's a possibility for one of these CTs, specifically Calais, to peek out that he could punish, but they won't be finding it in all. Flusha, oh. if he sprays into that boost spot at the right time, he could get some massive damage onto these guys, but just not finding it. And now Draken gets himself up on top of the shroud spot, and they have no clue he's up there currently. Definitely know that could be a round changing play from Draken right here. Bomb is situated in T-spawn and currently getting ready to throw some smokes. So we're going to have two smokes coming in. JW just holding the mid for any rotations. And then it's going to be an A hit surely with 50 seconds to go. And Draken will be the man to watch in my opinion if they go for this A take. The real question is, did they spot it? Did they catch Barbar crossing back for some reason there? Whether that's just them thinking he's changing position or falling back from something else. Mm. <laughs> that is that is yet to be seen here. So the track is up on top, but there we go. It's tired of waiting. It's time to strike, and he's going to move in there. Unfortunately, Pronax will trade out onto his teammate, which boosts him up there a moment ago. And now all eyes onto him. He's actually able to get one more as he drops down. But Schneider tapping away, as we've seen from him so far in this tournament, finds Kale, But Kale at the same time just burnt JW, took him down. This stays even into a two versus two. And no more time to wait. Schneider's actually going to take a lot of damage from that Molotov, way more than I think he thought. Down to 44 now, but he does get the plant. Rez and Freddy on the way for the rotate, but they're taking it very slow too. They have no utility. They've got to try to creep out here and hope they can get appropriate angles against the Godsent players, but Lecro is looking very impatient with those peaks right now, trying to find these players as they move into the open, but he can't do it. Their flashbang, which they found on the ground, is used here, but Schneider lining up one kill. He knows the second player is pushing up now since Rez fired off their shots, but also Rez is with the last two R. Gets the first one to Lecro, peeking out from Quad, gets the response, and it'll be Godsent tying us again. This is like uh, reading the same page of the book, like <laughs> over and over again. Another one. But to be honest, it's a quite enjoying book. Like, I'm really enjoying my time here. This is uh, some high-level CS coming out of these two teams right now. Godson just battling it back now. 14 to 14 between these these two teams. And just winning that, basically, that, that 2v2 hold on that A-bomb side. And now we do see the UMPs once again. Every time one team's win, one team wins, the next team, the other team buys up. But it's not a perfect buy. We do see two UMP 45s this time around for Epsilon. So that could be the changing factor here. But Godsend 14, Epsilon 14. And look at this boost. Counter boost coming in. JW, though, he's hiding below. He may expect this as he moves in. He looks for the head. He finds it. And there we go. Cowley, he's going to get that kill. Not a lot of response damage on him either. And the Molotov tossed over top prevents anyone from chasing him. He'll be safe to fall back. And with that, the guys from Epsilon will hold the negotiation rights here for this round, so to speak, in the five on four. Yeah, Kala rotating all the way back to short now. Not going to play any close range situation uh, or position really here in mid. Just holding white box if they want to push out on mid. And then the question is, what did Godsen want, God want to do now? The initial plan was foiled by that counter boost. So do they want to go? Okay, that's what they want to do. Obviously, Lecro knows exactly where Draken is and takes him out of the equation. Flusher trying to make his way into A main with that UMP photo. Look at that Barba -bar. once again. He knows his teammate died pushing that door, so he thinks, okay, they're not going to expect this, but Snyder doesn't care. He knows exactly what's going on. He's got the lock. Take us down, Barbar. -bar. As he tries to sneak his way in there. We may actually still see Kale try to move himself into A main too, but Godsend now have free rights to move out here into mid. And it looks like they're going to go all on the B site. But Epsilon have the good read onto this. You've got Freddy and Rez sitting in this bomb site, and Kale, which can contribute later on a flank back in on the retake there. Flusha, however, has found the first kill, but they haven't checked this left side box. Freddy is going to get that kill. Unfortunately, the spray coming in through the box is a little bit too much for him to handle, and it all falls to Kale here now. In the 1v3, the plant is going to go in. He'll have to try to push his way back into the site now through vents, but they're already expecting that too. They have a player fully committed to it. He has second thoughts about it, and he's actually going to fall away in the other direction here. 
Not sure whether he's going to save yet, because the ma the money, I imagine, is in a pretty difficult place right now for Epsilon, considering it'll go to the 30th round. So, yeah, he is going to make the smart choice here to fall back and just go for the full save. So, Kali's going to be able to bring that Galil and Arma. And, uh, well, okay, technically an AWP as well, so he gets a whole package basically right now. So, Kali being in a lot of money into this next round, but Epsilon's money situation in general is not going to be perfect for this one. Godsend, on the other hand, will have exactly what they need, bringing us into this one. Godsend finally bringing it back to the normal level again. After they bought in that last round, pretty much everybody except for Kali and Barbar were pretty much broke, and the yeah. most that what they had, I think, was Kali sitting at 750, so... Oof. With them just now being reset too, we can see it. It's uh, <laughs> well, it's a it bit is. desperate. There it is, guys. 15 to 14 godsend on the brink of bringing themselves further on into this tournament. Epsilon on the brink of going down into the loser's bracket of this playoff. And oh, Freddy B with the deagle again. That could be interesting, but godsend with five AKs and full utility. And we can see, again, they've spread themselves still evenly. They're not going to obviously take a risk on anything here across the map. But these SMGs and a lot of the positions they're currently trying to play from are not really going to be too strong, unfortunately. These are a lot of long-range SMG battles they're going to have to try and take. Yeah. And their aim has to be on point 100% if they want to work these. JW, though, did a KZ practice here as he leaps his way across onto the white box. I think Kale has spotted it, though. He falls back, he waits for it. If JW tries to go for that spray transfer, oh. and oh no, <laughs> whips the nade a little bit. It's not going to have too big of an effect. He's cleared out mid. That's the important part. And he, uh, he's only lost uh, 70 HP in return. And he did the damage onto Barbar as well as now on 42 HP. So that is a good start from him. JW trying to once again make the difference for his team. And in this situation, it's going to prove very important. That early game. He's hunting for Barbar there. Yeah. Finding him as again he tries to peek his way out into the corner. Still playing this out in the mid as the rest of his team slowly but surely gets into a position to execute there over onto the B bomb site. They have not. Gotten a clear path to it yet. I'm trying to force Rez away a little bit here, but he can spot these guys. Yeah, but the SMG again. It's another long range battle they're going to have to take here. Lacro's taken down Freddy, and that is an almost open B bomb site, but the bomb is, or the apologies, the op is sitting here now. Draken finding that one kill. They tread on a barbar, but Rez coming back in. He's picked one up too. It's 2v3, and Rez through the smoke, finding flush. They still have Draken sitting up on this site. Schneider, he's here, but currently he's alone. He's only got that pistol to work with 10 seconds left, too. Rez saves the day, rolls in, and with that, we go to overtime. The Rop comes in, and finally, somebody with an SMG gets into a good position, so Epsilon are able to save themselves and take this in to overtime. Huge round by Rez there, showing that the UMP45 can actually do great amount of, that, of damage. Of course, not in the long range, but in those close range when you position yourself in the correct manner, and he just takes that, run out, that round home for Epsilon. On the brink of defeat, they bring it back into overtime. So the dream is still alive. Indeed it is. And we will go once again into MR5 16K overtime. In case anybody who was not tuning in yesterday and saw that one overtime match. And I think it was another uh, I think it was another Godsend match that was the one that went to OT. Yeah, that was Godsend LDLC in the first one. So anybody that uh, didn't see that one yesterday, just a bit of a, an update there on the format that we're using here at the minor. Yeah, and definitely like LDLC took that one. Oh, that is <laughs> great emotion from Baba. <laughs> You can just almost <laughs> hear him yelling for that video clip, that's great. But the thing is that last time Godsen they played this overtime down here, they lost to LDLC, so they absolutely have to improve here and show the world that they can well, take this one home. Double orb setup on the CT side though, Draken and Barba both with an orb. On the T side, only JW, which is the, the way that you usually play this T side AWP. And here we go, round number one out of ten. Let's get into it, and let's take a look and see if Godsen can get back. Onto, uh, onto the 2-0 train here now, but oh, taking a lot of damage from Molotov somewhere else on the map there. JW and Schneider being brought down, 19 and 51 HP on either one of those players. Also to be noted too, the double op setup that has now come in from Epsilon. We'll see how that is used. Unfortunately, their economy was in a pretty dark place for most of that half. Thankfully, they won't have to worry about that too much here in OT. But with them being able to consistently buy, that's just another factor that Godsend are going to have to deal with. There's a large part of what enables them to hold control oftentimes on their T side. And with Draken in the picture, it's going to get a little bit tough. He'll get a two for one trade. But with his aggressive positioning, he does now get traded out by JW. On the move, and though, the second off is also positioned in this A bomb site. Barbar and Kale able to play that very nicely, and they bring it all down to JW here. 
That was a good investment on that double outside. If you can see precisely how well it works, and it actually got, they got positioned both of the orbs on that A bomb side, which is a rather weird choice, but it works out for them in the end. So definitely improved by me. Uh, JW with 19 HP to go, so he's probably not going to go for anything anything too crazy here. He's kind of just uh, chilling out right now. Yeah, and with it being five rounds on each side, he, he sh well, economy is going to come into play at some point in this game, so. Bringing this AWP and the utility into the next one <laughs> could prove huge for him. It'd be great if he just got wall banged right now. <laughs> you can see the other player on the other side. Barbara's pushing it. No. Come on. Oh! <laughs> so go. patient. Patience plays uh, pays off there as he finds that kill on the bar. <laughs> we knew he was waiting for it and it uh, works. But goodbye. <laughs> Three, two, one, dead. So he still gets traded, but hey, he got that uh, he got that kill he's waiting like 30 seconds for here in the <laughs> here in the room. So Epsilon go up, 1-0 to zero here on the CT side in this first overtime. Godson need to battle his back now, but the way that we've seen this game go back and forth throughout the last 10 rounds, it wouldn't surprise me if Godson picked up this one. Yeah, the trades have been very, very consistent, but I think a lot of that has been coming in due to the economical battle that I mentioned yeah. in the last one that kind of happened in regulation time too, where neither team really sat on an even pedestal, and we had some scrap buys coming in for both teams there, which caused quite a few weaknesses. Will not be the case here in OT, especially with Epsilon uh, winning that first round. The one thing that could risk it, of course, is the double off setup, but they both, uh, both managed to keep them in play there. Yeah. So no money lost there on the Epsilon side, and well, they push a Rez, I'm going to dive into the smoke, not going to find the first kill, and a Rez explodes, one, two, three kills for him, that's Lecro, JW, and Schneider all getting taken out by Rez, and now Pronax sits as your last man standing in checkers, it's not going to last very long either, Draken with the peak, finds him standing in the doorway, that's a quick kill for him. That was a perfect hold from Epsilon. Um... Basically, what Gotten tried to do is that they tried to pop flash throughout the smoke, but at the exact time that the pop flash came in, Rez just instantly dived into the smoke so he could have to flank and have his teammate just hold the bomb site for the for the next five seconds. Drake, and of course, on that bomb site, and Rez just taking that one down for the team. Good play by him, and it's going to be two rounds now, two rounds in a row for Epsilon. That all being shut down there, Drake actually going to get a cold lot in the process too, as I you know on the replay that I have. Good stuff from him. As he explodes in that round too. Schneider now is going to push his way through there, taking down Draken himself. Fortunately, that play is not going to be plausible this time. As we need to see some rounds from Godson going up onto the board. And they still have that same basic stack of players working their way into the A main area there too. This needs to change. We need to see some variance. We had that in the last round, but a little bit more tactical than that as the direct play they did make was countered out pretty quickly by Epsilon there. So now they started out by playing three players in that A main and going one aggressive towards B. Now slowly rotating most of the team towards that B pulse, while two players just playing that lurk position. Nice shot from JW. That could be the entry into the side that could secure them the bomb plan. And it will be because the CTs are on three different positions on the map, very different positions on the map as well. And well, JW can hold down Reds here. That's not going to be a problem. And then we have, I think, Snyder holding down. Calais on other part of the map, so it's basically just going to be Barbar trying his best 1v2 on this bomb site, and that's going to be incredibly hard. JW is lined up in Sunder, but actually the timing on these peaks ends up working out. JW and Schneider find both of those kills, and yeah, there's not a lot for Barbar to do. <laughs> oh, flush it through the wall! <laughs> <laughs> Tries to fall back into a corner where he can pick up a few more frags, but just does not work out there. Shut out through the wall, as you mentioned there, sprayed down, and with that. All of a sudden, Godsend are right back in the match here. Yeah, and very important one for them to take this one, but also to take this one with only one man lost, I think. Uh, they saved four weapons going into the next one. Must feel bad to be a pro next right now, dude. Everybody's over 20 kills <laughs> except for you. She knows it's there's going to be, be another ready threat coming. It's got to be that <laughs> really awkward feeling in the room where everybody's like, I guess for that pro next guy. But it's, 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 it's the same thing. For example, like MSL and Dignitas. And if it works out in the end, it's fine. Uh, in my opinion, but yeah, usually it's <laughs> when when one guy is, is having <laughs> 10 frags less than anyone else on the team, it is a problem. Pronax is like that weird kid in the classroom right now. Everybody's <laughs> just wondering what he's doing in the back. What's he doing? <laughs> What's going through his mind? Actually, that is a legit question right now because I would love to be inside of Pronax's mind as he basically he is controlling this Godsend team in an overtime where they can technically almost like bring themselves so close to the major qualifier with just one win here. Well, Barbar, again, waiting for them to push in. He's actually got a really tight angle against these guys, but oh no, it looks away. Dodge the flashbang though, and that's almost a collateral. 
Dodges it at just the right angle there. Sick man survives for now, but that doesn't mean he's going to be able to stay alive on the secondary peak. Barbar finds Schneider. Draken picking up some kills or two. JW did take down Kale, but Draken's got a good hold on this. They double Molly off the squeaky door. They're not giving Godson access to anything here. Epsilon buying so much time for the rotate. And with the bomb lost to A main, there's nothing that these two can do here. They're going to just have to try to go for the leap out, but Draken's ready for that. Takes it down and... Draken's been looking for this uh, for this wall bank against JW for like the entire game so far. I'm actually amazed he hasn't hit it yet with how many attempts he's taken at it. I'm really impressed by how well that the AWPs of the CT side have been playing so far. Like Barba and Drake, for that matter, has been playing absolutely insane in these last two, three, four rounds. Barba here, we see him starting off with a double, and if you can start up with a double kill at the beginning of the round without losing a single member, that is usually 75% of the time at one round. But we go into the last round here of the first half of overtime. And we'll get to see, of course, if the score remains closer. Remember, the magic number here being 21. So if Epsilon can come back here and take control of this one, only two rounds are needed on the next half to be able to take control of this match. Those Godson still have a bit of a long road to go here, even if they take control of this one themselves. So let's see, full buy for both teams, so no worries there. Double up setup once again. On the CT side, Draken and Barba, who has been playing perfectly so far in this overtime. And uh, yeah, a bunch of mollies for the CT as well. So they hopefully can use that, use that to block off the terrorists when the push starts, and even force them to use some of their smokes to extinguish those mollies. Kali again, playing over here behind the forklift position. We've seen how effective this has been before when Epsilon, or apologies, when a godsend have tried to go for just these all-in hits onto the A site. I imagine that this one may get a little bit more creative though with the mid-pressure, but I mean, even if they try to work their way out for mid-pressure this time, since we have those guys kind of lagging behind currently in the shed, there's two guys from Epsilon sitting in there waiting for them. They boosted a player up into the vent, so that's going to be Freddy waiting for it, and they've also got Barbara playing for towards the white box, so even, you know, getting that mid-control is going to be hard enough, and I'm sure Kelly will obviously be aware of the push and be able to adjust his own position should we see that happen. Rest now on 2 HP, so definitely HP advantage in the hands of Godsend. But Lekko getting that shot. clipped then. Kale finishing it off. Barbar starting the job. And look at that, Freddy Beast not contested at all. He can just open up with that frag. And all of a sudden, this looks very good for Godsend, but JW answering back with a double. JW's pick up there, all of a sudden we see them flooding back out into mid. They get back control of the bomb. It was looking like Flush was actually going to lose it there, but regains control. They bring this down to a 2v2. He's going to hightail it away from Highway, though, as he's being chased. Just manages to get out of there before the peak comes in from Draken. But only six seconds left. They've got to get the bomb up here. They're waiting for them to push in. They finally get it onto the ground, but it's just in the nick of time here. And Draken, he's going to slowly push his way in, but Flush is jumping up on top of the shed, finds it. An almost impressive flick from Draken. He still actually gets that kill on a JW. Chases him away, he jumps out into the open. That's JW's mistake there, and it's going to cost them dearly. Draken, though, he knows where Flush is, but he doesn't know if he's going to stick around or work for the flank. There's so many possibilities for him to work towards here now. He's going to check it, and it seems like he's got the perfect read. The flick rolls in. Draken with a huge clutch, and it'll go 19-16 at the end of the first half. That is an incredible clutch from Draken. He knew exactly what was going on in the minor flusher right there. And Epsilon, 1916. That is insane. And JW, you making the big mistake there of going for that second yes. jump after he's already behind the box too. Costs him his life. And then it comes down to that 1v1. And Draken uh, just plays this beautifully there. So we'll go into the second half probably immediately here. But we can see again. It's a big game for JW. Just not yeah. big enough as we can see here. Yeah, it's just the usual performance where, where Godson, if they play really well, JW and Flusher has to play really well, and they're doing exactly that. The interesting thing I want to highlight, too, is actually, if I remember this correctly, I think Draken only had, like, three kills or so at the end of the first yeah. half. Yeah. He's really low on the totem pole. His He's second like half bragging. is was insane, and his overtime as well has been absolutely beastly. He's had a complete 180 turnaround, and yeah. he's become kind of the hero of this team now, especially towards the end of that, uh, especially towards the end of regulation time, too. We were seeing some big stuff from him. It's part of the only reason that Gunsen are really still in this match right now. Yeah. Still in the upper bracket. So here we go. On board with Draken once again. Just gonna pre-flash. Make sure that no one is pushing his position, just holding that down. Playing very carefully, and this is the style that Epsilon I really like from them, they are playing intelligent CS, not taking chances where they know it's going to be hard to get something out of. It's Jake taking the duels he knows he can win. And the delay from Epsilon too, as they also go for the default lineup here. Not sending anyone early on into A main, however. In fact, everybody pretty quickly shifting their positions over here, and this is 
a somewhat predictable smoke lineup. If we see a peek from Z, they're going to know that this is to cross over into the vents there. So the site defenders need to get ready. But of course, as usual, this could also be a ruse. So the ace defenders are not really going to have enough intel to rotate off yet. But with JW pushing in the squeaky, they should be able to detect this pretty shortly. Now Epsilon, they'll move in for the execute here. Player on the site not peeking out yet. Schneider, though, going for it. He's found the first kill, looking for more. He's going to drop down. They don't expect this. There's one kill. Thankfully, they trade him out quickly in with Rez also picking up the frag on a flusha. They've cleared out the site. Now we have to rely on Lecro and JW working their way in from the A-bomb site to be able to retake this. But without Schneider finding massive impact there on that drop-down play, this is going to be a little bit tough as Epsilon will be able to keep ears to the ground and pretty much have eyes on every angle for the retake. Freddy being the perfect position right now. Two players trying to come in for vents and he takes down the first one. Second one goes in, but JW grabs that frag. Now 1v2 for him to clutch. He's looking for the first kill, but it's not going to play out. Rez wins it there. And Epsilon pick up their 20th round. One more to go, and they steal map two away and take us over to our third and final map. Rez, another player too we haven't talked much about, who uh, in the last like three to four rounds of regulation had some really huge impact, specifically with the SMG on yeah. that final round. Kind of saved it. And I was just about to bring this up too. I was wondering when we were going to see some cheese here on the overtime buys. <laughs> Finally, it's coming with Flesh up picking up the auto sniper. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Very interesting because that weapon is either an absolute terrible buy or it works out perfectly. So there's no kind of middle ground with the auto sniper. And with flush air wielding it, I think it could be very deadly. Well, again, he'll position himself over here back in mid to try and punish any of the push from Epsilon there. We saw how aggressively Epsilon wanted to play towards it in the last round there, but this time it is a complete divergence. They've are pretty much just heading this all into a direct A take. While they may still actually have mid pressure though, this is where the auto sniper could come in. If they can call that pressure, if they can stop it from being effective here, they're going to be very, very limited in the routes they have to actually get control for them already pushing back in them and they're being so quiet about it. They're not looking for any kills here. Flusha, he's rotated back in with that auto sniper though. Picked up one kill, but they're playing with his position and Draken is going to catch the trade. The Molotov to make sure no one else goes back in. Rez too there, firing some good shots onto JW, bringing him down to 17 HP from inside. He knows he's there, turning away though, and Pronax leaping out. That's a mistake from Barbara. Loses his life, but Freddy B is in a position to trade a 3v2 and a combined HP of about 30 here, but JW walks right out. Rez is there to catch the trade, though, once JW eliminates Draken. But with Schneider left as the last man standing, the bomb has actually not been planted yet, so he still has time to work with here. But he's going to play it oh so carefully. Wanted to hunt for that player in mid. Couldn't find him. Rez on the site here now. He's got that lined up, but he doesn't see it yet. He can hear the shots. But not going to take a chance on giving away his own position. With still so much time to go. Oh, that is so close. Molly coming in here. Not gonna kill him. So, Snyder now 1v2. Oh, oh, what? Rez just lost his life to the Molotov, and now he's gotta find Freddy's up on top right now. Yeah. Freddy has the best advantage he could possibly have. Oh no, Schneider, he hasn't fully checked it. He's missed the opportunity. He's looked around the round corner here, and Schneider's wasting so much time with this. Freddy B has dropped down. Oh. He's going to... Oh, have they not seen each other yet? This well, round, this Schneider's round, walking man. out, and now he can definitely hear him. Freddy B should know the general vicinity of where he's positioned at. He's going to go for it now. Jumps onto the bomb. Freddy wrapping in. Two Surely. seconds, though. Freddy looked like he was going to take a chance in the knife, but still switches over to the rifle, shuts it down, and there you have it, guys. The upset has come in. Epsilon have stolen away cash. We go 21 to 16 as the final map score there. It's one to one, and it'll go to a third and final map to decide who moves in to the upper bracket. And uh, what better map two to have than DE Mirage in the third one, which of course is DE Sweden, basically. Yeah. The Swedes are so good on that map, and we're going to see two very talented Swedish, Swedish teams duke it out on there. A classic Perfect. map for both of these teams when we look yes. at their records over the past couple of months on it. Very strong, very prominent, and there's going to be an absolute brawl. Of course, after we give these players a little bit of a break and whatnot to refocus themselves, recenter, and for Godson to figure out how exactly they lost control of that matchup there. Yeah. That was absolutely, uh, it was hard to watch, to be honest. Uh, I thought Godson had that one in the, on, like in the bag, but yeah, Epsilon just 
straight back in there. And you put it you put it really really well with Draken and Res being the two players that really made the difference in the last two rounds, three rounds of regulation time and in overtime. All right. Well, we have some other fine gentlemen to bring back into this conversation over at the desk. You didn't so call us other guys this time, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> hey, dude. How's it going? Yeah, going well. I mean, I'm feeling. I mean, that's the easiest prediction of my life. <laughs> New Epsilon are going to be taking that second <laughs> Wasn't worried at all. Um, I think you're right. Right, Rez seems in the regulation that 1v2 with the UMP on B site was the only reason we even got to see yeah. overtime. Um, so everyone, I can't think of a name in Epsilon that underperformed there. Could you? Very, yeah, it was very I, even on the fragging. Yeah. A bit of a team, a team effort. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's stepped up in different stages of the game as well. Yeah, I think you guys question. mentioned that uh, during the game, the fact that Draken was pretty much not on the server for the better part of the first half. And on yeah. the CD side, once he got his hands on an op, Sitting there, you know, well, pretty much towards A the entire game, just picking up frag after frag after frag. So he came up big. And I think that, yeah, I think he ended up like close to 30 actually yeah. towards the end of it. Yeah, well, well, we'll take a look at the stats and all of that good stuff here on the desk. Thanks very much, guys. We'll be back with you for the third map, Mirage. Now, Natu, Vendetta, the nitty gritty. Godsent unable to close that game out and now going into a third. And I, I can't help but feel tides are changing, mm. winds are changing. Losing that one in the way they did as well, feeling like they had full control. Uh, throughout, not that, I wouldn't want to say a great deal of the match, but it did look like they were closing that one out in regulation, didn't it, Natty? Yeah, I mean, my biggest issue right now with Godsend is, is why, how one-dimensional their, their T side is. It's, it's either JW and Lekro and Door, the rest of them except for Slatter, just A main and they're waiting for an opportunity to get on the bomb side, or they rush B. Where's the, the smokes in middle, trying to take over middle? build up from there on out, or the good old checkers control we see from teams like NIP. Yeah. There's so many variables, so many things you can do, but none of which Godson likes to opt to go for. And all that overtime, you could see Epsilon really started to be more aggressive. They Jarkin goes for a peeking door, gets the entry right away. They push A main, so they kind of nullify that one go-to plan from Godson from the get-go. I mean, isn't there some moral to if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing? I mean, well, they, they the were fighting rounds. Well, Epsilon for the better part of that CT half, or, or, or for a large part of that CT half, it was broken. In sure. a sense. Like from, from Godsend's point of view, sure, like if A works, then, then go for it. There's no need for you to change things up. But they have to have something in their back pocket when it stops working, which they didn't. The Cali Ace. They changed the pace at some point at least. Yeah, because you, you saw it eventually, and this is what Yuna mentioned, the fact that it, eventually they just started stacking up towards doors. They would use all their Molotovs towards doors. They weren't worried really about A main at all. They could set Draken or Barbar up in a passive position uh, to hold off A main because they knew that you know they're going to try to find a pick before they execute with the smoke or anything like that. So for Epsilon, it becomes a lot easier to play these stage set games yeah. and actually utilize their utility correctly. Yeah. And you can see Godsend had a variety of rounds just come crushing down to Mr. Draken. This was it, the second half where he did certainly come alive. Rez was forced into various situations, even seeing Draken cut down to size by Flusher at one point, getting that extra 1500, which you actually identified he did need at that point yeah. in time, getting that knife round. But this is when this is when things were close. This is what we're talking about. Very inseparable. This is Draken on the second half, a completely different player to the first. But uh, all this around getting a little lost here. This is the, the big no-no round, really, from uh, what, what, what we saw as part of yeah. it. Yeah, one of the B rounds that well, at that point, A was working out pretty nicely. Epsilon really hadn't made the, the adjustments they needed to. This to is it. Hold this is a. the res round. Yeah. Saves the day. And there's a lot, of, like, a lot of awkward takes, really, from Godsend whenever they went towards B. Yeah. And it, I think it, that, that they didn't look methodical. They didn't look like they they, plan, they have planned like every aspect of it, like who throws yeah. one Molotov, who throws what smoke, who flashes, when do we go? What's the flow of the whole attack? It kind of seemed like it was just, yeah, yeah let's go to B. Um, yeah, I'm going to throw smoke. Yeah, you, yeah you'll throw a Molotov. Yeah, let's make it work, boys. Yeah. It'll work great. Which I'm assuming, as you guys will probably know better than I, is not typical of a Pronax team. <laughs> I uh, mean, Pronax, he likes a free flow style play. I mean, I think it, it goes without saying if you look at the Fnatic lineup of old. Um, sure. I mean, then, but then, then you kind of had that kind of uh, tool set of but tools that that it, it worked yeah but you can you can have a free flow style and still know what to do when you have to execute yeah, because yeah, yeah. Sure. Free flow. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's what godsend doesn't really have on, on a lot of these maps uh, we saw parts of it on train yesterday uh, on their t side which is encouraging but today we didn't really see much of it at all so so with that said then where does where did the praise from pronax and his leadership start and originate it was very good at reading very, yeah, very, very, very good, good at, at mid game calls and that type of thing okay. but 
so you know that's always going to be a strength but when he's not able to get a good read on on what to do or you know necess- well even if he gets a good read you still have to execute towards the side yeah. and actually get into it and do that properly <laughs> otherwise it doesn't really matter how good of information you sit on if you can't actually take advantage of okay. it i Fair think enough. something we need to highlight is though from epsilon's point of view a cool strat they did in a uh, tech nine armor by yeah the double run boost yeah double run boost yeah. to wreck the shit out of Snyder yeah. in checkers. <laughs> and then even the second guy gets wrecked in B right away. That's a cool little trick. They smoke off the entry to B, so they leave checkers open, and they know there's an all playing B, and they double run boost. And obviously, you know, you don't, you're not going to hit that shot a lot of the times with that op when no. you get double run boosted. Um, JW, one of down. the few that <laughs> yeah, has exactly. this tournament. Yeah, so, yeah, very cool little trick there. Yeah, probably yeah, a bit, little bit more depth, perhaps, to Epsilon well, than there was Godsend. Actually, yeah, that was kind of the, the yeah. <laughs> intriguing part, the fact that Epsilon seemed more prepared on cash and obviously the, they're running old epsilon yeah. starts in that sense and it was so the best to go back to, but yeah, yeah. It, it definitely was and it's probably one of the few maps they've managed to play a game on uh with cali but uh, you can still see that there, there's more afterthought to what they want to do and like what they want to do with their rounds yeah. than what godsend were trying to figure out because godsend was solely relying on getting picks yeah. that was the end all be all it, it felt to me like it got a little too easy on overtime for yeah. epsilon i mean once they really caught on the fact that we can just go into a main or push door and that's pretty much going to nullify anything that godsend's trying to throw at them yeah. um so i mean getting those four rounds on the first half of overtime you kind of you kind of fell was over yeah. well we, we talked about pronax and his reads let's actually read the scoreboard and see where pronax does f- kind of fill in there because it hasn't been fantastic for him it was a uh, nine frags i believe for him at one point but that's, ended up on that's, 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 that's correct. correct. That's not right. No, I believe actually Pronex and GW are uh, the, the other way around. That's yeah. to be. The, no, it definitely is. That's definitely it. Because yeah. Pronex got two kills in the last round. And he had nine mistaken, in the yeah. round before. So, yeah. So, that just, just to clarify, Pronex did not get 21 frags. It was indeed JW who was Maybe having a great, a great it, time. It says the same on HLTV, though, which is weird, though. I think that has to be mixed Unless up. Unless they yeah. were on like, different accounts or something. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Unless we were just we were, gone were we mental. completely misreading the scoreboard? No, no. We were watching the game. We watched Pronex was not getting a lot of stuff. And obviously, like the <laughs> we saw JW four get four in one round, so yeah, that's yeah. not okay. well, well. Like, uh, play me, bot. Well, J, well Damn J, it, J, JW had like 32 kills, or yes, something. he was top of the scoreboard, yeah. yeah. Um, but in any case, I mean, oftentimes when you see people, or especially in game leaders, have poor stats, yeah. uh, you know, on forums and everything, people are going to be like, yeah, you know, minus this guy, plus this guy all day long, and we're going to be sitting here at the desk, for, you know, trying to defend them in the sense that they actually bring some sort sure, of value, of but. When you're in a scenario like this where Godsend actually don't have anything to offer strategically, then you actually have to step up your individual game. It's just that simple. If, you, if you're if you in a similar situation like MSL where you actually see that one of the biggest things about Dignitas that drives them forward is, of course, individual skill yeah. comes into play, but it's the entire structure around the team and the way they build their rounds up that make them successful, then you can understand why he's still in the team. I, I, I also thought like, we kind of acknowledged that there was something to be said about we're moving away from in-game leaders and bottom of the scoreboard being an understandable and appreciated uh, excuse. I think we've kind of agreed that that's no longer something you can use as a valid excuse that I'm leading so I can bottom frag. I thought, no, we'd, got, I, I thought we'd kind of deviated from that by now. Uh, no, I, again, I don't think it's uh, like in that sense. There's no excuse to bottom frag at any given point for any yeah. player. Like it's, it's, it's uh, if anyone like depending on what kind of responsibility you have within the team, right? You can say that about any player. He's a support player. Hoi, well, hoi, oh, hoi, yeah, hoi, I hate hoi, that hoi, word. Hoi, Jesus. <laughs> Natu uh, just had this <laughs> grimace on his face. Those support players, guys. Um, sorry, just closing thoughts before we start talking about our next map. We are getting a little carried away. Very, very, wo- actually slightly worried for Godsend, if I'm honest. Are it, you? It wasn't Hashtag pretty. It, was, Epsilon it wasn't pretty, wasn't it? But then again, I think what Halver was saying, that this is the one map that, that Godsend does actually look like a uh, a, team a contender team, right? So, That's true. Uh, but I, I did see uh, Epsilon play in Group E. Um, on a Mirage, it wasn't like it, it was definitely not something you yeah. know super elaborate, but it was effective. Um, and they would do some effective B pushes. They had their A smokes on on lockdown, and the way they committed to all the pushes looks really good. And they grinded out a lot of rounds where they're down. Even they, they lost the two first uh, players, still still able to win their three on five by by Draken and uh, Barbara are doing a lot of work. So uh, is it safe to assume then the question, the only question to determine your prediction would simply be whether or not Godzin can bounce back after conceding cash, I'm right? pretty sure they can. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm confident they can um, considering just the, the, the pedigree yeah. these guys have. 
I mean, it's been so close. We had a 16-14 first map. We had an overtime second yeah. map. I would be disappointed if we saw a stomp <laughs> either way at this point in time because these two teams are truly locking horns. How over on Natu, how on earth does this one play out? Just because I'm interested if you've shifted from Godsent because I <laughs> have been waving the Epsilon flag from the start. No. No, and... No, I can't. You I can't. You're not going to deviate. Goes against my principles. Damn you. Well, we'll be finding out after the break if the casters have got a similar uh, kind of idea and precipice. Precipice? Premise. After the break, <laughs> we're going to be finding out that one while I go ahead and find a dictionary and work out how on earth to speak English. We'll be back after the break with your third map.